So we're going to start before a minute because everybody's uh, ready to rock and roll. Welcome to the award ceremony for the Feinstein School of Humanities, Arts, and Education. I'm Dean Jeffrey Merriweather. I'm the Associate Dean, Ann Proctor. Uh, we are here today to celebrate the accomplishments of our students. For the friend, Woo! Friends and families that are with us, please know that we have far more praise and pride to express than we could possibly have time for in a single afternoon. Your students and you all being honored, those of you who are here to support, you are the reason for what we do. We are very proud of you and we're so happy to, happy to celebrate you today. And we have a big program full of exciting scholars and artists and performers and advocates, so let's get started. We'd like to kick it off and welcome our history faculty to the podium. <laughs> I'm a little shorter than Dean Merriweather. Anyway, um, hi, my name is uh, Deborah Mulligan, and I am the chairperson of the history department, and it gives me a great pleasure to be here today. Um, we're honoring our wonderful students with amazing averages, and they've done amazing work, and it's not, it's not hyperbole. They really have um, excelled in all their classes. So um, I'm here. First of all, let's see, where's the program? Okay. I am going to introduce Professor Sarnam Donovan. Um, let's give it up. Thank you, Debbie. Um, so let me get right into this. We have a bunch of awards to give out. Our first award for the history department is the Clio Award. Our Clio Award is for excellence in the study of history by a sophomore. Uh, this year's Recipient is Nathaniel Oldenburg. Nathaniel has done fantastic work at the level of a sophomore. Um, in fact, actually, he took his methodology and uh, historiography course with me this semester, uh, and he's currently working on a piece on the history of the Aztecs and conquistadors, where he's uh, juxtaposing the uh, the information that we have from the Aztecs themselves, but also from an indigenous perspective, but also from the conquistadors, um, and going back and forth between the two to actually figure out ways in which the uh, material culture actually was affected by the way in which the conquistadors viewed the Aztecs. It's a really fascinating take on this. Um, Nathaniel has taken numerous courses with me already um, throughout the history department with all of us, but uh, did superb work last semester as well in Middle East um, survey. And to be honest, he's wonderful, he's eloquent. His knowledge far surpass, surpasses most sophomores that I've dealt with over the past 10 years. And we look for really wonderful things for him in the future. So I'd like to say uh, to bring Nathaniel up here. All of our history recipients up. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, I can move along. I think Nathaniel is here, but I, he hasn't come up yet. No? Okay. Okay, um, our second award is actually the Ronald Davis Memorial Award for Excellence in the Study of History. Um, our Davis Award is the award that's given each year to the history student, the student uh, history major with the highest grade point average in history. And this year we actually have a three-way tie and I'm going to present the first one. So I'm going to present the award to uh, Samuel Castiglio. Um, Sam is a, has been a fantastic student in the department these four years. Um, on a regular basis, I tell Sam, Sam is actually our expert in the department, in the department, 
uh, for religious studies and theology. His knowledge of religious studies and theology far surpasses most PhD students that I deal with on a regular basis, and I'm on many committees outside of Roger Williams. Um, Sam wrote a fantastic piece for me uh, on the Black Death last year um, and looking at both Christian and Muslim sources and looking at how they theologically interpreted the Black Death, what they thought that meant for those of Muslim faith and those of Christian faith. Um, with the exception of, I think the only thing you didn't do was look at the Arabic sources. Other than that, your work was fantastic. Um, and also, I have to say that if we can invite him back in a few years after he gets his PhD, you can come back on for religion and the state. You're going to do some theology with him? Hi there everyone, um, I'm Charlotte Carrington Farmer, Associate Professor of History, and it's my privilege this afternoon to award the second Davis Award to the highest senior with the highest GPA, to Richard McGee. As a transfer student, Richard has made a huge impact in such a short time. He is the History Department. Arguably, his greatest achievement is his senior thesis entitled The Devil Drives Their Worship, European Perceptions of Witchcraft in, early modern, in the Early Modern Atlantic World. By reading sources against the grain, Richard has produced a graduate level thesis. And I don't say this lightly, but this work has fundamentally reframed the existing historiography. He has a forthcoming peer-reviewed article, Religion, War and Native America, The Causes of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials, which will be published in the Phi Alpha Theta Journal. Richard is currently working with RWU's archivist Heidi Benedict on a project to uncover hidden histories in RWU's own archive. He's dedicated to pioneering the experiential reacting to the past pedagogy in the classroom, and his efforts in this field will stay with me forever. He will attend the University of Rhode Island this coming fall to study for his master's in history. And this is only the beginning. Richard, from one historian of the early modern Atlantic world to another, Richard, you, alias Crombad, future professor of history, I look forward to learning with you and from you for years to come. Hello, it's me again. Um, by the way, um, between uh, Sam and Richard, they they uh, impersonate the best history folks ever. Like from Suleiman the Magnificent to Oliver, was it Oliver Cromwell or Thomas Cromwell? Thomas, Thomas Cromwell. Oh so, yeah, we'll miss that a lot. So they'll have to come back. So anyway, I um, I'm also here to award the third Ronald. J. Davis, who, from what I understand, was a European historian who passed away very suddenly in the 1980s, so they named a, uh, an award for him for the highest GPA, as Charlotte and Sargon said. But this is for uh, Elizabeth Ng, but my guess is, I don't know, I don't think she's here. Lizzie, are you here? If she is not, she's probably teaching or on our dreaded 195 bridge in the third lane, waiting for um, the investigation on bridge construction to conclude. Um, so I will move on to Herbert and Claiborne Pell Award for Excellence in the Study of U.S. History and Culture, which will be awarded to, again, we have a tie, two students, Adam J. Horvitz and Amanda Lung. Um, and again, two wonderful students. Amanda has done her um, 
did her senior thesis with me, um, comparing, she's going to correct me, I know, but anyway, comparing African and Chinese uh, diaspora and immigrants, and um, an amazing job, because comparative history is quite difficult, and uh, yeah, she's, she's done uh, wonderful work, and she makes me laugh all the time. So um, this Cl uh, Claiborne Pell Award, um, is for excellence in American history. And um, Herbert and Claiborne, of course, Claiborne Pell was a, um, a senator from 1960 to 76. His father, Herbert Claiborne Pell, which is actually what the award is, uh, is named for, was uh, minister to Portugal, and I believe he was instrumental at the Nuremberg War Trials. So, um, so the family always um, has these awards and also Pell Grants. But anyway, I'm going to bring up Amanda. Come on. We also have this. Oops. Somewhere. I'm so gracious here. Congratulations. We just uh, heard him make a uh, wonderful presentation. We use the words amazing and wonderful, but they're really not hyperbolic. They're really true. Um, Adam was just presenting at the Middletown Newport Historical Society in a big old fancy hotel. Uh, Dean Merriweather was there. Um, we had you know, uh, Professor Quesada Grant was there and the Middletown Historical Society folks were there and they were extremely impressed with Richard um, and the work that he's done that they want to continue with us. And he looked at uh, New England stone walls. He did a wonderful presentation and also gave a, an amazing pamphlet that they're going to hand out to their people. So um, we wanted to honor Adam for his award, and he's got, he's just getting all sorts of awards today. So you want to award Adam, who's also doing his This is this. You're welcome. Congratulations to Abby. Oops. Just one more award from history. Um, so it's my pleasure then to award the Herodotus Award for exceptional um, service um, to Richard McGee, who we met earlier. Um, and as you heard earlier, Richard McGee is an exceptional scholar. But really what sets Richard apart is that he's committed to using his scholarly knowledge to bring about change through service. Richard has spearheaded a wide range of initiatives to uncover the hidden histories of slavery in and around the state of Rhode Island. He's completed several community partnership public history projects with the Rhode Island Slave History Medallions, which is a statewide public awareness program committed to marking historic sites connected to the history of slavery. Richard has completed extensive archival research on enslaved peoples in Salesville, Rhode Island, which has fundamentally changed our understanding of ideas of indigenous unfreedom and indeed Quaker involvement in slavery. He's dedicated his exceptional talent to the task of combing through countless primary sources to recover the names of enslaved peoples that have been lost to time. He truly is a practitioner of bottom-up history. His service is extraordinary. He volunteers at open houses, accepted Students' Day, and he's currently mentoring juniors in our historiography and methodology course. Richard is also a leading and active member of the RWU chapter of Phi Alpha Theta. He's a president of RWU's chapter of Alpha Chi, the National Honor Society, and perhaps most important, Richard puts theory into practice, and he's deeply committed to building upon RWU's commitment to being anti-racist. 
And most recently, he's using his knowledge of indigenous history and the ethics of facing East and decolonization to lead a team of students to campaign for Indigenous Peoples Day here on campus. Thus, in a fitting tribute, it's my pleasure to award you, Richard, a signed copy of the Indian Great Awakening with a special message from the author, Linford D. Fisher, who, like me, is excited to see what the future holds for you. Congratulations, Richard. Thank you, history. Next up, we have philosophy. Thank you. I'm Mike Wright, uh, and Bob Blackburn. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, Bob Blackburn says we'll be here also, but the vicissitudes of life are unfortunate. He has to be somewhere else right now, so uh, I'll be doing this. And I want to, first of all, acknowledge Kristen Harrell, uh, who is also getting an award uh, graphic design because she's this is part of her senior project has something to do with philosophy because she's also a philosophy minor. Uh, the award that uh, I'm going to be giving is uh, named after Dr. Rodolphe Louis Hebert, who was a professor of philosophy here from probably the late 50s until 79. He was a man who hired Bob Blackburn, who in turn hired me, so I'm in a funny kind of way the replacement for Dr. Hebert. However, I don't look at all like him because he looked like a professor of philosophy, uh, old world charm. He always referred to Bob as Mr. Blackburn because Bob did not have a PhD. And I was always referred to as Dr. Wright because I have a PhD. In any event, the award itself is not based on uh, GPA. Uh, although fortunately this uh, uh, recipient this year has an impressive GPA of 3.95, and also just received an award uh, from the business school uh, for the highest GPA in the management program there. So he's, he's got some street cred, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, it's not based on the, on the uh, GPA, and uh, it's uh, kind of hard to figure out exactly what it's based on, but uh, I would say that it's, uh, it's based on a sense of, uh, of wonder, because as Aristotle said, philosophy begins in wonder, and Ethan, Ethan Eichmann here, who is a recipient, uh, exemplifies a number of things, several things. First of all, mastery of the material, course, um, but that would also be reflected in the, in the GPA. Uh, what's more impressive about him is uh, his uh, almost obsession with pursuing questions philosophical. Uh, I've been working with him for a year on a thesis, and I've been meeting with him several times a week also uh, on an independent study course, and in, in, in that kind of contact, you get to see how the mind is working, the questions that it asks, and then uh, the joy that uh, he takes in playing in the playground of philosophers with concepts and ideas and so forth. Um, and uh, I think that, uh, oh yes, he's also a double, well, you know he's a double major, uh, and what I like about this, the fact that one is in business and one is in philosophy, uh, is that uh, in a funny kind of way, there's almost the spirit of Socrates there because Socrates is the one who took philosophy in the marketplace and uh, Ethan 
while he could do graduate work in business probably, and could do that graduate work in philosophy, he's decided to get a degree in a graduate degree in uh, uh, social work. And I think the reason is tied to perhaps his thesis. His thesis is on well-being, and I think what he want, hopes to do is to help other people enhance their own well-being. So, congratulations. Yeah. All right, hooray philosophy, thank you. I'd like to invite, thank you. I'd like to invite our education faculty and students to come up. Hello everyone and thank you for coming to support and you know, applaud these wonderful um, students. The Education Department awards the John Dewey Medal to graduating seniors in our three majors, elementary education, secondary education, and educational studies. The criteria for winning the medal includes demonstrated excellence in teaching, internships, and scholarships. This is Marisa, everyone. Obviously, you may not remember this, but you wrote it in one of your papers. When I teach, I want to make sure that the students feel comfortable and validated. Each time they would answer a question or raise their hand, I make sure to call them by their name and congratulate them on the correct answer. I always have believed that the more excited I am to teach content, the more excited students will be to learn it. Every teacher, we say, should have taken a theater class because you have to be dynamic and enthusiastic. Well, Marisa minored in theater. Every, every teacher needs to have a basic understanding of the STEM area. Well, Marisa specialized in STEAM. Every student needs to know about special education areas of teaching. Marisa is getting a graduate degree in, educa in a special education. Every faculty member knows Marisa as someone who is knowledgeable and a resource to everyone. Let me tell you, Marisa's study guides are famous. I wouldn't be surprised if they sell on the undercover market for an enormous price. She is that good. Most importantly, Marisa is genuinely interested in learning herself, learning best practices for teaching kids. She's creative, she's enthusiastic, she excels. She's reflective, always asking for feedback, applies, edits, and improves her work with her students in mind. It is my honor to award Marisa Sestone the Ju John Dewey Medal for Demonstrated Excellence in Teaching and Scholarship in the Field of Elementary Education. Christina Raposo. This is what Christina says. I aim to see every child succeed inside and outside of the classroom, socially and academically. Christina graduated in May as a first generation college student in her family. She has 3.99 GPA. Remaining on the dean's list all throughout college and at the same time balancing working part-time. She's graduating with a main minor in professional and public writing, a STEAM certificate, and a variety of teaching experiences. She has worked with kids ages 4 
and to 11 in various capacities. During her student teaching in Pell Elementary School in Newport, Christina researched and implemented learning supports and strategies to aid students who are English language learners in her classroom. Christina is looking forward to leading her own classroom where she will continue to hone her teaching and research skills. It is my privilege to award Christina Raposo the John Dewey Medal for demonstrated excellence in teaching. Samantha Pepkin. Samantha is extraordinary. She is a double major, secondary education and mathematics. 3.96 GPA in mathematics. I mean, really. <laughs> in addition, she has a minor in computer science. She's a sought after tutor at Roger Williams in the math department. She has tutored Calc 1, 2, College Algebra, you name it. Samantha has been a first year orientation advisor and coordinator for three years now. An honor student with two capstone projects, one in education, one in the honors program. To find more about this young woman, you only need to tune in to WQRI 88.3 FM at RWU, where Sam is a co-founder and co-host of the radio show, It's a Metaphor for Life. In her practicum placement, teaching both geometry for English language learners and algebra to inclusion, Sam sent out a survey to 53 of her students as a means to quickly get to know them. 85% of the students reported feeling anywhere from relatively neutral to very uncomfortable with mathematics as a whole. This is a quote from Sam. What these students feel and think cannot be ignored. I have to believe that the way we teach the subject can influence these attitudes. And as such, I want to research what we could be doing better. In fact, Sam is going right after her bachelor's to her doctoral degree in math education at Columbia University. It is my privilege. My privilege to award the John Dewey Medal for demonstrated excellence in teaching and scholarship to Sam. Do please stand up. This is Maggie Grace. She is an exceptional student. During her undergraduate studies, Maggie consistently demonstrated outstanding dedication and enthusiasm for her coursework. She exhibited um, brilliant critical thinking skills and had a strong ability to grasp concept, uh, complex concepts, apply them to real world scenarios, and communicate them to our class. This leads me to one of Maggie's most notable qualities, her genuine passion for helping students. She has a natural curiosity about finding and creating resources to support students' mental health and a strong appreciation for supporting all students' needs. In our classes, Maggie created a literature review presentation on students' mental health during the pandemic and developed an engaging and interactive lesson plan teaching high school students the importance of college preparation which I could have used when I was in high school. I wish you were my guidance counselor then. Her enthusiasm for education is contagious and Maggie consistently went above and beyond to deepen her understanding through extracurricular activities, such as being a member of the Colleges Against Cancer Club at Roger Williams, interning for the Mount Hope High School School Guidance Department and working at the Roger Williams University Tutoring Center for finite mathematics. I have no doubt that her passion will continue to try for success in the education fields. 
Aside from her academic and research accomplishments, Maggie possesses outstanding personal qualities that make her a really great person to work with and have in the class. She is highly motivated, self-disciplined, and possesses excellent communication skills. Her positive attitude, her perseverance, and ability to adapt to new challenges have consistently impressed both her peers and her faculty members, including myself. Congratulations for getting the John Dewey Award for Educational Studies, Maggie. We're so proud of you. Education, thank you very much. Next up, we have our friends in creative writing. Good afternoon, I'm Ted Delaney, my colleague, Professor Renee Soto, and we can bring up our awardees. Uh, I'll be presenting the Matthew Wolf Scholarship. Uh, the Matthew Wolf is something that we have been uh, giving students for better than 40 years now. And our recipient for this year is Cecilia Egan. And uh, I thought that more so than telling you about Cecilia, I wanted Cecilia to tell you about Cecilia through the essay that she was awarded this uh, Matthew Wolf Prize for. So I'm just going to read a few paragraphs. But to give you background, Cecilia was diagnosed uh, as a kindergartner with Friedrich's ataxia, which is a rare uh, degenerative condition. And she wrote this very, very poignant uh, essay on that. So I'll just read from that. When I was diagnosed at the age of five, nothing changed, but everything changed. I was just poorly trained at walking. I'd attempt to practice the craft by traipsing up and down the hallway. Spoiler alert, I wasn't very good at it. But I miss that feeling that I had as a kid, feeling like nothing has the power to slow you down. 15 years post-diagnosis, things are more complex now. I need a new body. I want a new body. My balance, completely shot. My legs, hardly cooperative. Hands and figures, mediocre at best. My heart, somewhat damaged, but stable for now. The unfortunate thing is that my mind is completely and happily functioning, working faster than my physical self. As human beings, we're in this vicious cycle of stressing over the next chapters of our lives. It's human nature. It's also not wise. Futures can't be predicted. My future, with a question mark, is a perfect example. Huge chunks of adulthood are wasted on creating goals that may never be achieved. Kids know what's up. They live in the moment. They are the moment. Happiness, love, acceptance, forgiveness. Those are the main ingredients in baking this pie that is life. Where did I learn this valuable piece of information? In kindergarten. Cecilia again, Matthew. Congratulations, Cecilia. I'm Renee Soto. I am in the creative writing program. I teach poetry. I teach many of the students here who are receiving awards in other areas. It's a real thrill to see you all here. The Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in creative writing is one of the longest programs at the university. It's a special, or it's a special degree. It's an arts degree, and it's more than 50 years in the making. A couple of years ago, a student, a former student from the early days, endowed two scholarships in honor of the mentoring and the teaching of early professors, um, Jeffrey Clark and Bob McRoberts. There are two Clark McRoberts Awards. They both have the same criteria. A graduating student who's, or graduating senior who's demonstrated superior ability and a minimum GPA of 3.0 or higher, or a graduating senior who's demonstrated strong academic progress. A graduating senior who has demonstrated a passion for creativity, inventiveness, and an ability to break new ground as displayed through their creative writing in the categories of poetry and or fiction, 
and students who have expressed interest in pursuing a career in the fields of creative writing or related field. That's the criteria for both the senior and the first through third year awards. The senior award goes to Nicole Kowaleski. Uh, you, I will just say to you that Nicole also knows that the word belongs on the stage as well, and she may have seen her recently performing as Lori in Oklahoma or in other stage events. And the first through third year award goes to Shelby Ganey, who um, I don't think is here, but you may also see Shelby, who also takes the page and moves it to the stage in her own stand-up. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you to our creative writers. I'd like now to welcome up our English Literary Studies faculty and students. And while they come to join me up at the podium, I want to congratulate one of our faculty members, Jim Takach. After 45 years of scholarship, teaching, and service to this fine institution and uh, this community of colleagues and students, Jim is retiring this year. So please join us in congratulating Jim. Good afternoon. Thank you for attending. I have a couple more words to give. Each year we give an outstanding senior thesis award. English majors are required to author a senior thesis, a research essay completed over two semesters, second semester junior year, first semester senior year. This year's outstanding English literature senior thesis award goes to Anna Swansea. Uh, this is titled Massage Noir Throughout a Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. It explains how both racial and gender prejudices challenge the female characters in this 1959 play by a black female dramatist. So this award goes to you. Second award I'm giving. Uh, several years ago, my long-term colleague, Professor Mel Toff, established an award in my honor. This award recognizes a junior English major uh, who has an outstanding academic uh, average and a record of campus activities and service. This year's winner, Matthew Militakis, has a superb academic average and a record of excellent and extensive service as an English literary department intern. He has also helped our department plan and execute many, many, many successful campus events. So, Matthew? Yeah. Thank you, Professor Tom, for Establishing that award. Thank you, Jim. I'm actually just going to go slightly out of order. I'm Cynthia Scheinberg, professor in the English department. Um, uh, I'd let, I'll just, since we started seniors, juniors, I'll go to the sophomore award. Unfortunately, our awardee for the outstanding sophomore award, Lucas Matthews, can't be with us today, but I just wanted to note. Um, that he is the recipient of our Outstanding Sophomore English Major Award. Uh, anyone who's had Lucas in class knows what an engaged, um, empathetic, wonderful classmate that he is, who's always asks wonderful questions, and we really want to honor Lucas. Sorry he couldn't be with us today, but congratulate him. Uh, 
Our outstanding first year English major award is going to Leah McGuigan. I was lucky enough to meet Leah at orientation when she first stepped on campus to register for classes. And I was struck at her calm and cool demeanor uh, in the midst of what sometimes feels like chaos. Uh, and somehow I managed to persuade her to take my uh, upper division course in gender and sexuality uh, in English literature. And I remember when you came into the class and I saw all the seniors and juniors arrayed, chatting, it was chaotic, they all knew each other, and I thought, oh, was this a good idea to have a first year here? But of course it was a good idea. Leah had absolutely no problem fitting into this lively group of advanced students, and she did exceptional work, as is evidenced by her 4.0 GPA in her first semester. Please welcome Leah. All right, hi there, I'm Laura Diamore, and I have the pleasure of giving the awards out for the Ronald J. Caridi Award for Excellence in American Studies. The award is named after the founder of American Studies at Roger Williams University. Over the past few years, we changed the name of American Studies to Cultural Studies, but the core of the program is the same, and so we continue to honor the founder with this award. The Caridi Award is given to the most outstanding cultural studies graduating senior. And this year, the award is going to two phenomenal seniors, Hannah Cormier and Alicia Alba Ortiz. Hannah Cormier is a double major in cultural studies and legal studies, and will be heading to a master's program at Simmons College in the fall. It's been my pleasure to get to know Hannah over these four years. For the purposes of this ceremony, I'd like to recognize her excellent work as an anti-racist mentor for underserved high school youth in Providence through her participation in deeply community engaged year long course called Racial Justice in the Classroom and her outstanding senior thesis with distinction titled Radical Love for Black Women and Girls in the Crunk Feminist Collection which was also presented at a national conference in Chicago in March. We will miss you, Hannah. Congratulations and best of luck in your future endeavors. Don't I even start? All right, Alicia Alba Ortiz is a double major in cultural studies and creative writing and plans to attend graduate school for Latin American and Caribbean studies. I had the opportunity to be Alicia's first year seminar instructor in her first semester here, which was a remote year where she was learning from the Dominican Republic. That was a memorable first semester. <laughs> and then again for her senior thesis, which are perfect bookends for an RWU experience. Alicia uh, participated with Hannah and uh, as an anti-racist mentor for underserved high school youth in Providence, again, in that deeply community-engaged uh, year-long course. And her groundbreaking senior thesis develops and refines an original and exciting theory about Dominican fragility. It's called Dominican Fragility, Race is Not an Issue in the Dominican Republic because we are all mixed which was also presented um, at a national conference in Chicago in March. Again, we will miss you too, Alicia, and congratulations. I now invite my esteemed colleague, Professor McKinley, to the podium to present the awards for music. Thank you. Thank 
Greetings. Um, nice to see everybody here today. Yes, Emily, come up. Nick, are you in the audience? Come on up. And Dev, come on up. So, so I, I promise, I know that these things tend to go long, so I, I made a promise to not go very long with these things. So I'm Dr. Elliot Miles McKinley, Associate Professor of Music here, and I have the privilege of awarding um, these fine students here various awards for their activities and achievements. And the first award is going to go to Emily Raisin, who is getting our Academic Achievement Award in music. Now, Emily, um, the only thing I'm going to say is that you came to me a couple years ago. Actually, uh, I was on sabbatical, so her first year, she didn't get to have me. But she came in, and Emily likes to say, I can't do that, and I don't understand that. But she found out that she actually can do things and does understand things. And Emily is going to Italy with me. In fact, all three of these students are going to Italy with me in a few weeks. So I can't wait. So Emily, I present to you the Academic Achievement Award in Music. Congratulations. Okay, next on the big parade is this gentleman over here. He's a guitar player. You can't tell by looking at him, he's a guitar player. He actually played a blues this morning in class. Uh, Nicholas Rattery. And uh, Nick is going to get our Musicianship Award. And I did tease him this morning that he would play the solo that he was learning of John Schofield's um, Trio Blues. Did you bring your guitar? He didn't bring his guitar. Sorry. I guess you're not getting the award. Is that OK? Yeah. All right. So. Actually, he is, and Nick has grown by leaps and bounds. The only thing I'm going to say about Nick is that he came in as a, as a, a music concentration, then he converted to a minor because he liked it, then somehow either I convinced him or he convinced himself to become a major, and now he's a double major, and uh, he does very much, uh, he's very much earned this award, and it's, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of all of them. So, Nick, come and get your award for music. All right, and finally, but certainly not least, is Devin McGowan. And Dev, uh, I, I couldn't convince him to be a major because he, it was a little too late in his career. Uh, Dev is staying with us, actually, right? He's graduating, and he's going to get the Outstanding Music Minor Award. Um, and actually, uh, Dev is one of those students, and I'm sure that uh, my, my colleagues can uh, certainly resonate with this, that one of the students that you just love to have in your classes, um, engaged, very honest, brutally honest, um, he will tell you when you're not doing the right thing. Um, but I actually really like that. And uh, Dev, is, Dev is a bright and very talented musician and is going to do really great things in his life, I know. And uh, we're going to have fun in a couple of weeks. So Dev, you come and get your award for outstanding music. All right, I'd like to welcome our theater faculty and students to come up to the podium. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would, uh, I'm Jeffrey Martin from the theater program. Uh, I'm here with my colleagues, Robin Stone and Lori Lee Wallace, who will be presenting these awards. Uh, since brevity, we're told, is the soul of wit, we will be brief. You can thank us later. <laughs> I have the honor of presenting the first award, and this is the William Grand George Excellence in Performance Award. Uh, William Grand George, of course, was the founder of the theater program uh, way back in the 1960s and was here for many, many years. The theater within the Performing Arts Center is named after him. Uh, this award this uh, this year goes goes to Grayson Simmons. Grayson uh, has been in a number of productions over the years. This year she was in four plays from the Absurdist Theater. Is that what we called it? Yes, four plays from the Absurdist Theater. Yes, uh, and in which she was part of the ensemble. 
uh, and particularly for her performance as Christopher, uh, an autistic young man, in the curious incident of the dog of the night time, in which she led the, he, they led the ensemble of the cast. And it was a, uh, an intense rehearsal period, and one in which the ensemble taught me a great deal uh, about the subject matter. Uh, the performance was uh, stellar, and we are very happy to present Grave with this award. So uh, I have the, the honor of presenting our Excellence in Production Award. And this year, we really are focused on stage management. Those of you that don't do theater uh, might not be familiar with the role of the stage manager, but it is absolutely the one person that is required to mount a production. They're the glue that holds everything together, the actors, the director, everything. And we have two amazing stage managers receiving these awards. But not only are they awesome stage managers, but they're also brilliant performers. And one of the things I'm excited to see is more performance <laughs> from both of them. Um, that said, this, uh, this first award is going to uh, Ryan Al, who has, this year, has stage managed um, the Theater of the Absurd, whatever we're calling it, <laughs> the Nun of the Theater of the Absurd. He also stage managed Oklahoma with me, which we just closed. Um, he's a brilliant stage manager. Not only that, he's really kind of the glue holding a lot of us together in the department. Um, so, oh, he also directed. He directed Murder of the Grey House Manor this year. We're really excited about everything he's done and, and uh, looking forward to what the future holds for him. So this is for you, right? And we just couldn't pick one for this award this year because we have a really special student um, with Hannah Driscoll Kerrigan, right? I said it right. <laughs> Hannah is really just like, she's only a first year student, but she arrived and, and really took the reins as a stage manager, um, stage managing the Curious Incident, the Dog in the Nighttime. She was also a stage manager for Oklahoma, which was working with me and we lost our Aunt Eller, um, you know, a few weeks into the rehearsal process and Hannah stepped into the role. And I just think that says a lot about a student that can do both of those things and that can switch, you know, uh, positions for the good of the group. And, and I, I'm just really proud of her and can't wait to see what she's doing next. It's for you, Hannah. Hello, I'm presenting the Peter Wright Highest Academic Achievement Award. This award's named after Peter Wright, who was a longtime theater professor, starting at Roger Williams College and then Roger Williams University. And Peter demanded excellence in the classroom and on stage. He didn't always get it, but he demanded it nonetheless. Uh, and, and we present this award to the student with the highest GPA who studies theater. And this year, we're very happy to give it to someone who is an excellent student, actor, and writer, Sophia Thomas. Our final award is the Mary J. Staub Memorial Award. Mary was our administrative assistant for many years in the Performing Arts Center. Uh, she was, she did everything, she knew everything, she fostered everything. She was uh, a wonderful person and we named the award after her. And we look for a student who is always there, uh, always willing to help, always willing to contribute in whatever capacity is needed. Uh, theater survives on this kind of people on this kind of person. And as, as you've heard from uh, my colleagues, often it's an actor who's also a stage manager, who's also a, a tech, technical person, who's also a designer, who, who's, who will fit in and do whatever needs to be done. This year, it goes to uh, Anthony Miranda. Anthony has been in, this, in, these, in our tough circumstances, there, everywhere, wherever he has been needed, on stage, backstage, in the booth, front of house, or just cleaning up. Uh, and we really appreciate him. 
And for all of those reasons, we give him this award. So that's all, folks. I welcome now visual arts faculty and students. Good I'm Michael Rich, Professor of Visual Arts. Uh, visual Arts is like a small family, sometimes dysfunctional family, but a small family nonetheless. And the way that we determine our awards is by getting together as faculty and sharing stories about our students and uh, um, talking about the good things that they do. We are very fortunate to work with some amazing, gifted uh, young people with incredible talent. And there's not enough time to say all that we would like to say. So we've, we've uh, collected some of the best comments from uh, various faculty members that describe these students. Um, we have two scholarships to give today. One, the Adalia Whitcomb Scholarship, and there are two recipients of that. The first is Soraya Busadi Espanol, who unfortunately can't be with us today, I will say. Uh, Soraya's work is inventive, personal, highly original. She was crafting her own language in painting and drawing, a language full of spirit, she gives thoughtful feedback to her fellow students. Uh, the second student receiving the Whitcomb Award is Andrew Mello. Andrew is here. Uh, this quote, Andrew has bold, interesting ideas. Impressive drawing and painting skills. His work always provides great conversations and awe among the rest of Second scholarship we have today is the Thomas E. Fitzgerald Jr. Award, a long-standing uh, scholarship endowed by the Fitzgerald family in memory of Thomas Fitzgerald. Um, the recipient for that award this year is Grace Korchmar. Grace brings tremendous insight, ingenuity, and generosity to the studio. She is endlessly curious and creative and has a strong work ethic. She has a very bright future ahead in making and teaching. Yeah. I'll give you these later. Uh, and then we have a number of excellence awards uh, in visual arts and we'll go through these quickly. Uh, Victoria Machado. Victoria has a passion for painting and an amazing work ethic. Her work has expanded into narrative and is beautifully personal. And Will Nichols. Will is an outstanding photographer and video artist, as well as a substantial community builder. He'll begin working on his MFA at Savannah College of Art Design uh, this fall. Congratulations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Duffy, um, and I'll continue this. We have some awards for excellence in visual arts. The first is for Amanda Smith. Amanda is a powerhouse who puts dozens of hours into each project, showing passion, care, and brilliance in everything she does. Congratulations. Next, we have 
Member who makes class conversations pop due to her energy and imaginative spirit. Like many of our awardees, she recently exhibited her work in the Bristol Art Museum exhibition. Congratulations. Eva Erickson. several years of classmates and artists here. She consistently innovates, takes risks, collaborates, and creates deeply felt, thoughtful work. This summer, her work will be presented in Rome, Italy, and she will participate in an artist residency in Crete, Greece. Sophie's humility and devotion to craft helps engage her classmates to delve deeper and understand that time and craft is part of the life of an artist. Congratulations. There are not enough superlatives to describe Mia. Her energy, her playful sense of humor, they're all reflected in the imaginative works she creates in every media she touches. So congratulations, and we can have it. And you can see all these artists work tomorrow evening at the Muffin Show. Five to seven is the reception, so please come. It's open to everybody. <laughs> Congratulations to our talented artists. I'd like to now welcome a big group up to the front of the room, our uh, media and design and communication faculty and students. There's plenty of room. Come on up. Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Paola Prado, and this is the fine, talented, inspiring, and very good looking faculty of media design and communication. I have good news for you. We are the last to present today. The bad news is that there are five disciplines involved, but we're almost there. <laughs> So I will call up uh, the Faculty of Communication and Media Studies. Please, uh, Dr. Gentle Spart, Dr. Ram, and Dr. Cole. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Janjali Ram of Communication and Media Studies. Every year, one of the most joyful tasks of the Communication Media Studies faculty is selecting the student to be given the Excellence in Communication Studies Award. This year, we hit the trifecta and are delighted to give this award not to one, but three students. And so with much pleasure, I recognize Dominic Gold as one of our three Excellence in Communication Studies awardees. Dominic is unable to be with us this evening, but we would still like to acknowledge his accomplishments in absentia. Uh, Dominic is majoring in Communication Media Studies and has a minor in Marketing. He has been on the Dean's List through all his four years at Roger Williams, demonstrating his record of academic excellence. Dominic's stellar writing skills was recognized in 2021 with the Vermont Fellowship for Fiction by Roger Williams University Library. Vermont Fellows are chosen based on their submissions of an original fiction piece, and he got to attend a master class with an established writer for his, his work. 
For the past year, Dominic has been working on campus as a social media and marketing intern and with Roger Wellness and where he has been developing uh, really good strategic marketing plans for advertising and promoting health services on our campus. In addition to his academic accomplishments, Dominic is on the men's lacrosse team and has found time to serve as a team ambassador and a member of the Student Athlete Athletic Advisory. So it's with great pleasure, I present the Excellence in Communication Studies Award to Dominic Gold. Hello, I am Professor Gentle Spirit, Camille Gentle Spirit, and I have the honor of presenting the next Excellence in Communication Studies Award to Tessa Uden. Tessa? I do not have time to do justice to the brilliance, the astuteness, and the groundedness that is Tessa, so I'll just say a few words. Tessa is a graduating senior, and she's been on the Dean list every semester she's been here. Wonderful. As her advisor and professor, however, I can say with confidence that this honor does not do her justice. It does not truly represent who she is. Tessa is smart and brilliant, yes, and she's compassionate and empathetic. She wants to make our local and global communities safer, more inclusive, and more just for everyone. She's currently interning with the Community of Hope program, where she's working with underserved, marginalized communities, writing stories from their perspectives with the hopes of creating social change. And her pursuit of justice also extends to our furry friends. When she's not in class, Tessa works at the Bristol Animal Shelter, where her duties include caring for shelter animals, familiarizing them with human touch, and providing attention, love, and care to each animal until they are adopted. Now, Tessa's transcript and academic record doesn't show this, but Tessa is a total package. She is smart, and she's concerned about injustices and inequalities, which is a wonderful and powerful combination. Tessa, congratulations. Thank you. I'm Robert Cole, also a uh, faculty member in the department and rounding out our awards in excellence in communication studies. We're pleased to recognize Thomas McMullen. Thomas is a rising senior and he's made the Dean's List every semester since he's been here at Roger Wood University. Not only is he pursuing a uh, major in communication media, media studies, but he's also pursuing a dual minor in political science and criminal justice. But Thomas isn't just a thinker, he is also a doer. He's been involved in the ROTC program since his very first semester. He's completed courses in military skills one and two. He's taken courses and completed military leadership and management one and two. And as a well-rounded student, he's even wedged in coursework in food studies and taken guitar lessons here. Now you're probably wondering where is this renaissance person we'd all like to see him he got called up at the last minute for a military activity so he's somewhere in the rain in north kingston is that right but in any case please recognize the excellence in communication and now i call up my amazing colleague Dr. Bernard de Morte, and I'm one of the most kind-hearted social justice champions you will ever meet. I'm here to present two awards today. The first one is the Excellence in Journalism Award to Alex Tavallon. She's not able to be here today, but uh, Alex, uh, She's the full package, and she is a double major in legal studies. Uh, she just got an internship with WPRI uh, in sports journalism for the summer, and also she led a group of students uh, reporting on Bristol's Health Equity Zone 
So she's doing all kinds of reporting and leading the students in the department. Uh, but also, uh, because of her work, we also secured a podcast with the New England First Amendment Coalition for next uh, fall, and she's going to be leading that uh, uh, initiative too. So please uh, recognize uh, Alex Tavali. And the second award that I, we have here, um, I honestly think the name of the award doesn't make uh, justice for uh, what Claire Kelly has done in the past year. Uh, this is a Societal Professional Journalist Member of the Year Award. But Claire not only is responsible for uh, the rebirth of our chapter of the Societal Professional Journal, organizing many trips, organizing a uh, group, bringing people together, uh, creating a list of uh, jobs and internships for the students, uh, getting a workshop with the PRI Team White. Uh, and uh, one thing that I think is more important than anything is that since the beginning, so since last year, Claire stepped up to be a leader in the municipal program. And because of her, now we have not only uh, Trident program, but we have uh, about 40 students working in school, helping uh, different groups in both of the campus and in, uh, in the communities of Rhode Island. Uh, and none of this would be possible without Claire's work organizing, leading, and serving as the best example that we can have for a person in uh, the study of professional journalism and community folk. So please, around the And now, don't go anywhere, Dr. Shelton, you are next. <laughs> this is, please welcome Dr. Ami Shelton, a dynamic, energizing force in our department. I just wanna say I hugged Claire because she's a PR major. So she does all that for journalism, but she's a PR major, so it's pretty cool. I'm kind of tear. This year has been an amazing year for the PR program. This year we've increased our PR numbers by 338%. We got a Nest, which is a new PR lab in this building, and we did some PR for PR for the, to raise awareness of the program's viability as a major or a double major for people across the university. Additionally, I was voted professor of the semester by the students. I don't bring this... I don't bring this up because it's nothing about me, it's solely because of the students. These students are part of a cohort that is energetic, enthusiastic, and hungry to learn. While representing, representing their respective class levels, these four students rose above with their actions for the entire year. Each of these four students have contributed to this banner year for public relations in ways that I've never seen before, and I've been here since 2006. As a building manager on campus and an advocate for PR, and always willing to lend a hand, he has spent innumerable hours helping with PR students, play on events, do activities, and do outreach for the PR program. As an intern for University College, the Providence Division of RWU, he has implemented social media campaigns that assisted students in understanding the unique benefits that University College offers. He's volunteered his time to work with Bristol Warren High School students to know their options after high school, and he coached top soccer for special need participants throughout his entire high school career. The Senior of the Year goes to Christian Gunclaus. As PRSSA president, Alexander Koss has served as an organizer, a cheerleader, and a mentor for countless students on campus and those visiting RWU. She is gifted at making everyone feel like they're included, and she sings a cappella too, as she proved in Nashville to our complete amazement. She is dedicated to everything she can do on campus, and she's planned over four trips for students as of today with three more plans next year. 
She's participated in the Bristol Warren Town Grant Opportunity, and she's been selected as a Bateman team member for uh, next year's competition to try to win a PR campaign. She's also a member of the advertising competition next fall also. Both of those are pretty big deals and you have to apply for them. Other students provide quite rave reviews about her leadership abilities. So congratulations, Alexandra. A member of the PRSSAE board, Victoria has spearheaded the program on alumni and relations efforts. Reaching over 60 alumni personally, Victoria has brought guest speakers to campus, coordinated Zoom interviews with alum, planned and executed a PR firm tour to Boston, and coordinated travel for programs to Chicago and San Antonio. She has volunteered hours for program efforts and for campus recruitment. She has also secured a highly coveted internship this summer with the Boston Red Sox. Join me in congratulating Victoria. And Aiden Bladder sets a very tall hurdle for other freshmen. Aiden co-executed the first PR crunch, cute, right? Crunch. First PR crunch with Alexandra two weeks ago. This event, which was held right here in this room, had over 50 people attending, and it included 19 alumni. He's also assisted the program in various campus recruitment events the Bristol Warren High School Grant Program, and is spearheading a PR campaign to increase school spirit at Roger Williams University. His excitement and energy are contagious, and they're gonna be used quite well with his brand new appointment as liaison to a newly created PR Alumni Advisory Board. We expect great things from him in the next three years. Now, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Daniil Ammons, uh, who is the lead faculty and in that incredibly talented, always magical, always creative program of graphic design communication. Thank you so much. Congratulations to all of the, today's awardees. It is a joy to be with you to celebrate. Greetings to everyone, faculty, staff, family, friends. Thank you, Professor Prado and the Department of Media Design and Communication. It is my honor to work beside you. I also want to begin by extending a special thanks to our faculty in graphic design for their endless mentorship and support. We all know that it takes a village, and I'm proud to recognize in this moment our visiting faculty in graphic design, Emily Sarah, who was integral to our work this year, along with our exceptional and talented, yeah, she gets around really well. Along with our exceptional and talented part-time faculty who are such an important part in determining these awards today. I extend a warm thanks to Carrie Dennison Lidecker, John Farmer, Elaine Froelich, Eric Kowalski, James Party, and Z Dina Zaganinsky Dennison. I know all of these committed educators wish that they could be here with you today. Yeah. I promise I will go quickly. <laughs> I have a total of six lovely awardees to uh, share with you today. There's only five of them here right now, though. Um, but it does not take away from the award moment. Each one of these incredible students, maybe you guys could come forward. Each one of these incredible students have made an impact in the studio and the community, applying their creativity and critical thinking and design skills to work inside and outside the classroom. Together, they are our future in design where no imagination goes too far, where there is no limits to creativity. And I just want to, before I give the individual awards, just give a round of applause to these incredible designers. Smith. I am so proud of all of you. But I'm gonna begin with Kristen. Kristen Harold is receiving the Excellence in Graphic Design Award today. 
This award recognizes excellence and leadership in the graphic design program by acknowledging outstanding project work and dedication within and outside of the creative studio. Kristen's passion, her consistency, and her ability to deliver the highest caliber of work reflects both her creativity and technical skills. Her commitment to her craft and her willingness to go above and beyond in pursuit of excellence inspires her peers and elevates the standard of quality within our program. As president of the Design Club, senior coordinator of the Design Collective, and the lead researcher on the Provost Funded Grant Research Project, Designing Our Shared Future, Kristen's dedication to collaboration and inclusivity has left an indelible mark on the program. It is my honor to award Kristen Harold the Excellence in Graphic Design. Next, our Emerging Designer Award celebrates a student who transferred into the graphic design program and has displayed an exceptional focus, creativity, and exploration of new mediums. I am so sorry Nick Totino is not here with us in this moment, but I am proud to present him with the Emerging Designer Award. Next, I'm pleased to recognize Lucero Blanco, who is receiving the Design Vanguard Award for her groundbreaking design practices and ability to forge new paths and creative directions. She questions and reshapes the very essence of design itself. Lucero's innovative approach to design pushes the boundaries of what is possible she fearlessly explores new ideas and concepts that defy convention. Her willingness to question established norms and experiment with unconventional methods makes her a true visionary in the field. She inspires others to think outside the box and embrace the item. It is my honor to present the Design Vanguard Award to Lucero Blanco. Uh, next, I'm pleased to present the Program Award for Community and Scholarly Engagement to Jordan Durfee. <laughs> this award proudly acknowledges Jordan's outstanding interdisciplinary work that spans disciplines across Shea and recognizes a deep commitment to fostering respectful community interactions and inclusive scholarly environments. Jordan is a dual degree recipient in English liter Literary Studies and Graphic Design, and that's a BA with 180 credits. This is a big deal. So yeah, that's a lot of work. Jordan exemplifies the principles of community and scholarly engagement, embodying the spirit of Shea's mission to create a welcoming and inclusive learning environment for all. Jordan's stunning record at RWU clearly demonstrates superior academic performance, coupled with a profound devotion to the values and principles that guide our institution. It is my honor to present the award for community and scholarly engagement to Jordan Durfee. Everybody's cute here. Last but certainly not least. Yes, okay. Last but certainly not least, our awards this year have expanded to include a Rising Star Award in both the sophomore year and in the junior year. And I'm pleased to recognize Sharissa Smith and Grayson Philbrick in this moment. The Rising Star Award, yeah. The Rising Star Award honors a design student 
who has gone above and beyond with their campus engagement, their support of others, and their devotion to our campus community. They are critical thinkers and are consistently engaged in the exploration of expansive practices, not only in design, but across their extracurricular activities. Each awardee has shown a deep commitment to their work as FIT interns and has made significant impact in their extracurricular endeavors through innovative project work inside and outside the classroom. They offer unwavering support to their peers, and they are what make RWU so very special. It is my honor to present the, star, the Rising Star Award first to Sharissa Smith. And the Rising Star Award to our sophomore goes to Grayson Philbrick. This concludes the awards for Media Design and Communication. And our dean has a few words, I think. No? Yes. yes. <laughs> We have another round of applause for our fantastic students. They are the reason we're here. Our students are the reason we work here. We're very proud of what we do. We really are proud of them as well. Thank you all for joining us on this lovely afternoon. Some of you don't think so, but I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I wish you well. Thank you.